I haven't shot any Toyaholic videos in a while. Um, life definitely got in the way. In the first three-parter, when I began this a couple of years ago, um, I went over to John Givens' apartment, which is roughly that direction. One name kept coming to mind for both of us, and that was John Davis. I would say, oh, uh, where'd you get this, John Davis? Oh, I like your Martian war machine. Oh, yeah, it got damaged in the fire, and John Davis repaired the neck for me. Davis made this neck for me, and then I went and re took it apart and repainted the whole thing. Oh, looks amazing. So we both had all these stories about our mutual friend, John Davis. John Gibbons knew him better than I did. And his name just kept coming up over and over and over. So in the back of my brain, it was always, if I ever do another Toyaholic video where I discuss another person's collection, it'll definitely be John Davis. And now that won't be possible. Three days ago, uh, I got the call from John Givens that um, Davis had passed away. He'd been giving me updates um, about the declining health situation, and um, it was to the point that every time I saw John's John Gibbons' number on my phone, I took it, no matter what I was doing. One night I was very short-staffed in another city trying to keep a restaurant open and uh, cooking food, you know, and the phone rings, I'm like, I gotta take this, you know, so, um, but the other morning, I looked at the number on the phone, and I was like, yeah, this isn't going to be good. And about 6.30 that morning, Davis had passed away. So, I have told stories about John Davis on this channel, um, and I'm going to tell you a couple more. And um, this is going to be what should have been an episode with him here, um, touring his collection and showing you, um, you know, his thoughts on toys. Uh, just, it'd be my memories of them. So right there is a shop that, unfortunately, I can't get a parking space anywhere near today. But in the 80s, 90s, it was one of the local comic book shops called Wizards. It was owned by Tim Eads. And that's where I met John Davis. Uh, he was frequently there running the register. Uh, you know, Tim couldn't be there every single day. So Davis uh, was about seven, eight years older than me, and I'm a teen in high school, just starting college, just finishing college, somewhere in that part of my life, and um, he was older, was already having some health issues then, and he was selling off his vintage Star Wars toy collection. We didn't know each other very well, and one day I came in and I saw this which was the Droids A-Wing Fighter. I've talked about this in a previous video. Now look right here. You can see the price that he had put on. That's his handwriting, $75. I couldn't raise $75. I didn't have a job. And I was going to have to talk to my parents about this purchase. And Davis, very... There was an emotion in his voice, but I didn't understand it at the time. But he said, um, I can go lower on that for you. Um, he said, um, how about this price? And I want to say it was 60 I, I think he knocked $15 off the price. I didn't pay less than 50 for that. So 50 would have been the rock bottom. But I'm going to say it was 60 And he said the reason he was doing that was because I see in you a good home for my things. I told that story to my mom the other day, and I was blubbering. Uh, I, I couldn't even get the words out um, the, the same day that Davis had passed. And um, it, it's always affected me emotionally. It affected me then, and it affects me now more so. Uh, so I went back, uh, however long later, and he had held it for me. And um, I paid him the, the 50 or uh, excuse me, the $60. And this became mine. But in our conversation, the day that he discussed this, he said he had never owned the pilot. And I had. So I took the pilot with me when I went to pick this up. And let's just take her out. 
there's no cardboard in that box. So this was previously John Davis's and has been mine since, we'll say, 1991. And I put the pilots in the ship and we closed the canopy. And John Davis and I shared a moment of, oh, finally. And then I took these home with me, and they've been with me ever since. My other story at that location about John Davis was I had ordered uh, with my college graduation money, so this is more like 92, a yak face uh, from a seller in Indiana, Jeff Freeman, Falcon's Hanger, typo. I've talked about him many times as well. But this was mail order. This wasn't eBay. You didn't see photos. You read a text description and you mailed off a check or a money order. So I didn't know whether or not he was going to be complete, have the coin, have the weapon, what. I just knew it was a loose yak face. I walk in the shop one day. Davis sees me. And he goes, hey, found something. And he slides across the glass-topped counter this. Now this weapon could go to three different figures one of whom was Yak Face. And days later, when my Yak Face arrived in the mail, he did not have a weapon. But John Davis had already taken care of that for me. And I said, oh, great. How much do I owe you for that? And he goes, meh, just keep it. Another gift from John Davis. Many years ago, John uh, Davis contacted me and he said, hey, can you help me with this diorama? If I send you a screen grab from this Star Trek episode, can you paint out the people so that I can use it as a backdrop? I'm like, sure, I'll give it a try. Now, up to that point, my ability to paint things out of a picture was actually cutting and pasting and physically moving it. I hadn't figured out yet what a clone brush was. And playing around with that photo that he sent me, it was just not giving me the, the results that I wanted and I thought that he would you know, deserve for the quality of, of skill and craftsmanship that he had in model making and diorama building and everything. And so uh, I said, there's got to be something in here. So I started playing around with settings that I'd never played with before, and I found the clone brush, and I started using it, and I'm like, oh, this is a game changer for me. Wow. So there will be a couple of images uh, that I'm going to add on the end of this video um, of John uh, that I've, I used the clone brush on uh, to get them ready for the video. And I thought, how perfect that he was the one that made me improve my skill set. And here it's come full circle. So these are some photos of John from his Facebook page that I've uh, gleaned in the past couple of days. He just really loved sci-fi. We would often have conversations about the robots from the black hole. We would talk about different things. I remember going to his house and playing Star Wars Trivial Pursuit with him and John Givens. And there was an early question that it was right on the edge and they decided to give it to me. And I ran the board after that. So I wound up winning the game and nobody else got a move after that. And I'm telling you that not to, to brag on myself or pat myself on the back, but to tell you that John Davis absolutely loved every second of asking me the questions as I got the next you know six pieces of pie to put in my pie wagon and win the game of, of Star Wars Trivial Pursuit. And I don't think I've played Star Wars Trivial Pursuit since that night. Um, but we would go over there and we'd you know watch Doctor Who or we'd talk about custom action figures or, I mean, it was just always a very laid back kind of a, a mellow time together. And, um, yeah, uh, he will be definitely be missed. I know it's leaving a void in John Gibbons life, uh, very much so. And even in the past couple of days, I've been like, oh, I need to get that model kit and take it over to, no, I, I don't guess he will. Um, maybe I'll have to step up and improve my own skills and start painting some things myself. So, uh, I regret that life and now death prevented me from having, uh, John Davis as a guest here in my, uh, Toyaholic video series, as I intuitively felt, uh, on the day that we were shooting the very first installment that, oh, he'll be the next person. So, um, rest in peace, John Davis. Thank you for watching.